Hey, welcome back everyone. I'm back today with some more reviews. I've got Helldivers 2 today. Uh, there, there was a few funny ones. There's a lot of negative reviews about the anti-cheat that they're using. So I'm not going to really focus too much on those ones because that's probably a legitimate concern that people have. I'm just more looking for like the funny ones. So yeah, let's see what we got. All right, I've got one here that's uh, a bit more ragey. This, this person is angry. They've got 32 hours at review time, but they got 50 hours on record, so they kept playing. But they say, Can't play a game I bought because devs are trash. All game devs are trash. Only give a f about money. Steam should allow refunds for this exact reason. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What's a swear word that has 8 words? Bullshit. Bullshit. Oh my god. Yo, get me on the prices right. I'm fucking ready. So, yeah, I mean, I love reviews like this because this person is losing their shit saying they can't play the game, but they got 50 hours on the game, so... <laughs> I would imagine this person lost the the battle. I haven't played Hell Divers yet. I'm imagining they lost their mission <laughs> and they were just like, no, fuck this game. Uh, so, yeah, these these ones are good. These ones are the ones I wanted to go, to go for. Got another good rage one. This game doesn't even work. Scammy garbage. Requesting refund. I guess their refund request was denied because they have 20 hours on record. <laughs> so. <laughs> Bad luck. Get scammed, I guess. You just keep playing the game. Alright, so we've got a person here. They've got 79.4 hours on record. So they're, they're presumably having fun. Or, according to other reviews I've seen, maybe they've spent all that time in the load screen. Who knows? But they say, it is never okay in my mind to charge for a base game and then have the item shop with premium currency, let alone at launch, and items that can only be bought with it. This isn't Fortnite. You can't just suck your players of all their money. I really like the game feel, but really guys, a premium battle pass and the free one? I just gave you $40. On top of that battle pass, unlocks as progression. On top of that, the battle pass unlocks as progression, I think. I really like the game. I really do. The hype was worth it. But now all I can think about is if I want to return it. Ooh. I guess they chose not to return it because they were at point. <laughs> they played for half an hour before they came up with this and then they still continued playing for 80 more hours. So it looks like they decided not to return it. I don't think this is a problem. I really don't. If you've got an optional battle pass, who who cares? Don't do it then. Just don't do it. There's heaps of games with battle passes and guess what? You just don't do it. Don't play the game as a job to try and get the battle pass done. I know it's fear of missing out, the FOMO. That's a huge thing, I know for sure. I used to do sales. I know all about fear of missing out. But you just don't do it. Have some willpower. Don't get so cranky about it. Oh, maybe I'm being too mean. I don't know. But I just don't think it's worth getting so worked up over this. It's just an optional thing. <laughs> so we've got another one here. This person's got 19 hours on record and about 11 at the time that they reviewed. And they say, Gameplay is fun. Planet side is great. Progression is pretty good if not grindy, but a little bit of grind doesn't spoil the bunch for me. What does spoil the bunch me is locking elemental weapons behind a premium pass after I just paid $40 for a game. That is unfathomably cringe. There's a special place in hell for whoever came up with the idea, peer reviewed it, coded it, and then put it in an otherwise great game. And I guess this is an edit? This blew up, so I'm going to specify some things. The premium pass is locked behind a premium currency. You can claim this premium currency through the through a free pass that holds normal armor, weapons, perks, and equipment. You can also find this premium currency rarely in missions. The biggest issue I have with this is the slogging grind you have to do to unlock the pass. Many people won't have the time to unlock the premium pass and miss out. It encourages you to spend money on the game. It encourages you to spend money on the pass to skip out on the grind. An ugly pay to win mechanic in a great game. Who knows how long the pass will even be here for, and if the weapons will be forever available elsewhere after the pass expires for the next one. So, 
I agree that having things locked behind the pass is bad. You never want people to be able to buy an advantage in your game. But the point of some of these battle passes is they want people who are money rich to be able to get these things and they want people who are time rich to be able to get these things slower. So if I'm a guy who's working 80 hours a week and I'm earning $10,000 a week and I've got no time to play this game, that's fine. I can pay the, who knows how much it is, it's probably 20 bucks, who knows. I can pay $20 to get all these things. If I'm an unemployed neat, I can spend 80 hours a week grinding for this shit. That's what it's designed around. When you think about how long the grind takes, and then you think about how much you could earn if you went to work for one hour and you could just buy this stuff, do you want to work for free playing the game or do you just want to spend money to get it instead of spending your time getting it? It's like just a value thing. If you find value in it, then you just do it. And if you don't find value in it, you don't do it. It's the same as any transaction. You can whinge and complain about it, but if it's not worth it for you, then just don't do it. So if you still can get the stuff, but it's just locked behind either spending time or spending money, then that's fine. That's a, a mechanic that's been in games for a very long time. If it's like permanently locked and there's no way at all to get it, there's no free way to obtain it, then that's bad and that's pay to win. The definition of pay to win has changed a little while since, since like games have progressed, I suppose. Basically anything with a cash shop now is called pay to win, which is kind of weird because in my mind, pay to win is when you can pay money and get a direct advantage over other people that have not paid the same money. That is what I call pay to win, but it's, you know, the definition varies depending on who you ask, but for this thing, if they're saying that there's a free way to get this stuff, it just takes time. Yeah. Hey, there you go. That's how games are. That's how they've been for the last 10 years. Who knows? Even World of Warcraft is the same. I was just talking about that at the start. You can pay for your subscription or you can go and farm gold in game to pay for the subscription with the WoW token. So do you want to spend, for me, I'm in Australia, so it's $18 or something or $17. I'm not subbed anymore, so I don't know, but it's like, let's say it's $15. It's $15, right? And I could pay $15 and be done with it or... I can go and grind however much a WoW token costs. Maybe it's 150k. I can go and grind 150,000 gold to buy a token. What do you think is going to take more time? Grinding 150,000 gold or earning $15 at work? That's the value that you have to that you have to balance. I don't think... I haven't bought a WoW token since they first came out and they were like 30,000 gold. I wish I bought a lot of them back then, but... Yeah, because otherwise it's like... I'm going to spend hours grinding that gold. I don't want to work that hard to play WoW. <laughs> like, that's too much. So, yeah. I know I know that's in the... That's in the minority of opinions. That that battle passes are fine for a shortcut for people that are time... Uh, time poor but money rich. So I've got one here that I actually think is sensible. Right, this person's got 0.9 hours on record. You can see that they refunded it. And it says... It's not often I find a game that disappoints me this much, but this one does. The theme and atmosphere hypes it up to be a great game, but in actual execution is where the game flops. Its gameplay is very one-dimensional with no challenge or complexity. It has more bugs than an early access game, and I had multiple full game crashes within the first 50 minutes of trying to play. It should be removed from the Steam store until it is fixed to a playable state. The devs and publishers should be ashamed of what they released and refund everyone who purchased it and re-release it in a year once they have come up with a game that doesn't completely suck. Best regards, someone who will not be playing even if they do fix it. I think that this is the right thing to do if you're not happy with the game and you're not happy with the state that it's in, you've got to refund it. You have to. I work in retail. There's a whole faulty returns policy that you can do. If you buy something and if you take it home and it doesn't work, Guess what? You bring it back. You don't just put it in the cupboard and be like, damn, this sucks. Oh, well, guess it was a waste of money. <sighs> like, you just bring it back. I scrolled through so many reviews where it's people just saying like, 40 bucks to stare at a black screen. Oh, just refund it. It's a faulty product if it's like that. 
it's obviously not how it's supposed to be. I think this person's smart. If you buy a product and you expect it to do something, or they're advertising that it's going to do something, and then you buy it and it doesn't do it, that means you got a faulty product. And you're well within your rights to refund it. In Australia, there's even like uh, consumer laws and stuff that will let you refund it within like a certain time frame. If I buy a TV and the TV explodes after like 11 months, as long as I didn't fuck it up, I can still take it back. As long as that I don't like take it in, they're like, oh, why is there a huge smash in this screen, sir? And it's like, well, because I hit it with a hammer. <laughs> like, if something goes faulty in it, they'll still replace it. They have to. It's consumer protection. And I'm sure that Steam has a similar thing. They've got their two hour refund window, which is how this person got their refund at 0.9 hours. This is how it should be. And then the developers will see that and then everyone's refunding. Well, now they're talking with their wallets. Now we should probably act. I'm not saying that they aren't acting already because they probably are, but it changes the priorities of things they might want to do. So if they were going to release something else, but then they realize, oh, everyone's refunding it. Let's work on this first. It's fine to refund things like this. I think reading through these reviews, I think about 50% of the people or more that I saw in these reviews, all their troubles could have been solved if they just refunded it. And that's really how it is. I didn't find as many funny kind of like silly ones as I did with Power World, but I think that's because like the, the exposure that Power World got opened it up to a lot more eyes that probably wouldn't have really been interested in it. They probably went there specifically to leave a bad review. But this one I think was a little bit, still a massive game, but a little bit smaller, a little bit of a different target audience. They didn't uh, trigger Pokemon fanboys. So there was more of these that were just like actual criticisms of the game. And actually people were reporting like, hey, we can't actually play, which that's all fine. There was a couple of funny ones but mostly it was just things that were good talking points. I'm sure in the comments I'll probably get some uh, some disagreements about some of my opinions, especially with battle passes and things like that, optional additional costs. I'm sure, I'm sure people will tell me all about it and, and feel free to do so, I don't mind talking about it. Uh, if you agree, just let me know down below or if you disagree, also let me know. Because, you know, obviously, uh, not everyone's going to have the same opinion. But, hey, it's fun to talk about things. So, yeah. Uh, like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you want more uh, review type things. I also think I'm going to do, uh, like, just different funny pictures and stuff. Different stories. I'll probably go through Reddit and find some of those crazy stories. And then start to read some of them. Because I love getting that stuff delivered to me. If I go on YouTube and I search like, you know, just stupid Reddit stories or something like that, I love when I can find them all without having to go look for them myself. So that's, I'll probably go and look for them myself and then I will deliver them to you. <laughs> so that's probably going to be my plan, especially if finding good reviews gets harder and harder. I really struck gold with Power World and I may have raised the bar a little too high because it seems like lots of other games just have like legitimate, legitimate reviews. So yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll keep doing this as well, but I need to branch out a little more because without Power World and their funny reviews, I'm struggling over here. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think down below. Sub uh, subscribe if you want to. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.